Johan didn't understand why Duke Gilbert treated him the way he did. Gilbert, for his part, could no longer bear his beggarly image. Johan began to think that Gilbert's patience was running out. It also seemed to him that people in the manor were whispering about him behind his back. If his master didn't like the way he dressed, he really should change his clothes. Johan reached out to grab his jacket. He felt terribly uncomfortable. Johan thought that in such expensive shops all the clothes were shiny and sparkling with luxury. But it turned out to be rather plain. Johan took the pants with the label. He looked at the price tag and was shocked by what he saw. The price for the plain-looking pants horrified him. Gilbert asked if Johan liked anything. But the frightened boy refused to try anything on. Johan just stood in the dressing room and mumbled something under his nose. Then he came out and asked Gilbert if he could just give him the money. Gilbert suddenly got up from his chair. He took a step toward him and indignantly replied that that was out of the question. Johan was afraid that he seemed to have upset the landlord. But Gilbert just poked his finger somewhere. He pointed to the garment Johan was to try on. Then he sternly ordered him to change his clothes and go out. With tears in his eyes, Johan mumbled that he could just buy clothes at the market and wear them. Gilbert's angry voice rang out in the shop, ordering Johan to change his clothes immediately. Johan went back to the dressing room with a luxurious door. Gilbert was angry, he thought he would go mad. Johan seemed to him utterly wretched and horrible. Gilbert turned sharply at someone's laughter. The shop assistants giggled. They gasped at Gilbert's reaction and they had never seen him with a friend in the store before. One of them said that Gilbert's friend looked wonderful, to which Gilbert replied that she was wrong. At this time Johan was whimpering and changing in the dressing room. Johan put on his jacket. Then he looked out of the dressing room and asked for help. Because of the cast on his arm, it was difficult for him to get dressed by himself. The kind saleswoman rushed to help and Gilbert grabbed his head again. What a selfless guy. Johan was amazed by the activity of the shop assistants around him. He looked at them anxiously, but at that moment Gilbert asked everyone to step back. He approached Johan personally and said that he would help himself now. Gilbert ordered the frightened Johan to stop stalling. He took a step into the dressing room and reluctantly asked how much longer it would be before he could finally try on some clothes. He skillfully tore off Johan's old shirt, then just as quickly tore off his pants. Johan was stunned and terribly embarrassed. He stood in the fitting room wearing only his underwear, down pants and sneakers. He was terribly embarrassed. Gilbert remarked to himself that Johan's underwear looked tidy enough. Gilbert thought for a moment about his dreams. He asked Johan to sit on the red sofa in the dressing room. Then he asked him to lift his feet off the floor. The Duke helped Johan to pull down his trousers. Johan was left sitting in his underwear and with a plaster cast on his arm, trembling with embarrassment. Gilbert looked at him and laughed. Johan suddenly felt cold, but his face burned with shame. Gilbert crouched down to help Johan put on his new pants. His face was unaffected. He helped Johan dress quickly and skillfully. Johan was shocked at what had happened. Gilbert continued to dress Johan, who kept muttering that the clothes were too luxurious. After Gilbert helped Johan put on his pants, he asked him to pull himself up. The pants had to be adjusted to fit properly. Johan caught his toe on the trouser leg and lost his balance. He started to fall, but Gilbert picked him up. Johan rested his head on the Duke's chest. Then he drew back sharply and began to apologize. Gilbert could smell Johan's smell of cheap soap. It was the first time he had ever smelled it. Gilbert, almost finished dressing Johan, asked him to get ready to try on the rest of his clothes. The Duke buttoned his collar, smelling a flowery scent from the boy's neck. Gilbert stood and inhaled the scent. Johan continued to stand embarrassed. The Duke looked at the boy's long eyelashes considered his neat little mouth. Suddenly Johan called to the Duke. Gilbert leaned close to him. Then he looked into the boy's eyes and apologized. Johan did not understand anything. It seemed that his master wanted to whisper something to him. He gently touched the sleeve of the Duke's jacket. 
and again he said softly that these things were too expensive, which once again left the duke stunned. Johan touched the pendant on his jacket again and just asked for the money. He complained that he could buy things twice as cheap. The duke's hand almost made a fist. He turned abruptly and told Johan to finish dressing quickly and go out. The duke hurried out, he had just almost kissed the man. He was angry because he didn't understand what was happening to him. Johan was still standing outside the door of the dressing room. He also clenched his fists because he felt a slight sense of danger. Johan passed his hand over his reflection in the mirror. The boy stood thoughtfully in his new outfit. He didn't understand why his heart was beating so fast. He remembered his handsome master. And it made him very angry because it was madness. He remembered the duke's eyes again. Johan remembered how the duke looked at him intently. It was not only the expensive clothes that bothered Johan now, but also the fact that Gilbert had decided to dress him personally. Johan remembered how terribly embarrassing it had been when the duke had helped him undress. When Johan saw Gilbert for the first time, he generally thought he looked like a movie star. But with Hertzak standing so close to him in the shop, Johan couldn't get a good look at his face, because he couldn't take his eyes off the owner's lips. Johan mentally tore his hair and thought he was crazy, especially when he remembered that he wanted to bite the duke at that moment when they were very close. It seemed quite unbelievable that his angry, cold master would want to kiss Johan. At this time Gilbert's mouth wrinkled unhappily. He was terribly angry. He went to the dressing room for the umpteenth time and began to pound on the door with his hands, for Johan had been changing for ages. Johan's voice came from the dressing room, asking him to wait a moment. Johan was still standing there with clenched fists, getting ready. Then he exhaled fatefully and said that he was finally ready to go out. Gilbert looked closely at his appearance. He liked Johan's new clothes much better than the old rags, but for some reason Johan didn't look happy. There were many more shirts hanging in the dressing room. The same number of trousers were also brought in. Gilbert wasn't willing to wait another carload of time for Johan to fit and try on the rest of the clothes. He told the satisfied saleswomen to pack everything up at once and have it delivered to the estate by tomorrow. Johan heard Gilbert's words and couldn't believe his ears. His stylish new shoes sparkled in front of him. Suddenly, the owner appeared in front of him, jabbed his finger at Johan, and ordered him to put everything on and wear it. The staff fussed around Johan, trying to find out if there was something he didn't like, why Johan always had such an unhappy face. But then Johan whined that if the owner decided to buy all this, it was a bad joke. Gilbert thought that Johan, on top of everything else, was very loud and intemperate. But the duke paid no attention to him, and simply added coldly that the old things the shopkeepers would not think of sending to his house, he would not tolerate them there. The shopkeeper readily agreed, and said that in that case she would throw them away at once. Everyone said goodbye to Johan and Gilbert as they left, and congratulated them on their wonderful new clothes. As soon as they were out of the door, the saleswoman breathed a sigh of relief. The rest of the staff talked loudly among themselves. Johan continued to complain that he could have bought a lot more at the market for that money. Gilbert was puzzled because normal people don't buy piles of clothes at the market. All the workers in the shop discussed among themselves how much Johan resembled the former Lady Maria. Maria Annies was the daughter of Count Reyes, so perhaps the Duke still hadn't forgotten her. At this time Gilbert dragged Johan to another shop. At home, Johan sprinted to bed because he was very tired. The duke dragged him to many places just to choose things. Johan was still shocked at the prices of the clothes. He began to prepare for tomorrow. Johan thought about the fact that he would definitely have to return everything to the store the other day. He slipped halfway out of bed and fell asleep. The ceilings in Gilbert's room were decorated with old moldings. His palm clasped a piece of blanket. Gilbert was also asleep and moved softly in his sleep. He dreamed of a rose garden and Johan in it. Gilbert fidgeted nervously in bed. His fingers gripped the blanket. He breathed excitedly. Gilbert turned from side to side and murmured Johan's name. 
Johan's hands were also clenched tightly in his sleep. He slept on the edge of the bed, mumbling his master's name. Johan kept complaining in his sleep that things were too expensive. There were many boxes of clothes in his room. Johan was still sound asleep. The maid suddenly burst into the room with a surprised cry. Johan jumped up from the bed, little Philippe still sleeping beside him. He turned and saw huge piles of boxes and didn't know where the things had come from. The maid said that there were so many boxes that they stretched all the way down the hall. Little Philip woke up and began to rub his eyes. Johan took his little brother in his arms and began to explain that these were not his things. The rest of the servants began to come into the room. They looked at the luxurious expensive things with envy and amazement. One of the maids asked the frightened Johan if he might see a gentleman. Johan thought it was a bad joke, for the master had bought him the things because he was annoyed at Johan's unattractive appearance. While the servants fidgeted and looked at things, Johan turned around and went somewhere. He was determined to speak to his master, for it was all very serious to him. In spite of his attitude, Johan looked frightened. There were indeed many expensive parcels in the hall outside his room. He was angry that his master had done this to him and put him in this position. It seemed to him that the landlord hated him. Even little Philip asked Johan what these things were. Suddenly Robert appeared in front of Johan, looked at him and frowned. Johan asked kindly if Robert had slept well. Robert didn't want any ceremony. He asked where such an insane amount of clothes had come from. Little Philip looked at Robert guiltily for some reason. Robert suggested that perhaps Mr. Herbert had bought all these things. Johan agreed and giggled. He blushed with shame and chagrin. Robert was obviously surprised that the gentleman had taken Johan to the luxury shops yesterday to buy clothes. Robert didn't understand the master's actions, although the master had once been deeply in love with Maria. He thought that Johan was a mediocre country boy and that there was nothing special about him except his outward resemblance to Mary. Robert was worried that after Gilbert's trip with his friend to buy luxurious clothes, rumors would spread about them in high society. Besides, this seemed to be the first time Gilbert had bought so many meaningless things. Robert could not remember the gentleman doing such a thing before, he really couldn't understand what was going on with the Duke. Suddenly Johan asked if it would be possible to return all the things to the shop. After all, he hadn't worn anything, and maybe he could get it all back for a reward. Robert's eyes glittered with anger. He flashed with indignation at Johan's insulting idea. Robert held himself back and only grimly told Johan not to think of returning anything, just to wear these things, cherish them, and dare not get them dirty. Johan's tears flowed, he didn't know what to do with so many clothes, now he couldn't even return them. Suddenly Johan had an idea. Just then the gentleman's car arrived at his luxurious house. The porter courteously opened the car door for Gilbert. The duke glanced at his appearance. He had never seen the porter in this garment before. Gilbert tried to maintain his composure. Not only the porter, but also the other servants were dressed in the new, beautiful clothes. The young men of the service staff shone in their stylish new shirts. Gilbert thought that perhaps Robert had just made everyone change their uniforms. He appreciated the good looks of the servants and went inside. But Gilbert also saw the luxurious clothes of the gardeners watering flowers with a hose and he asked them to come over to him. Gilbert asked them where they got their clothes. The gardener's luxurious shirt was already stained, but the gardener greeted the duke without a care in the world. Gilbert repeated the question of where the gardener had got such a fine shirt. At last, the gardener understood what the duke wanted from him and began to tell how it happened. But his partner quickly ran up behind him and hastily closed his mouth. Finally, Gilbert asked directly if the clothes had anything to do with Johan. He tried to ask calmly, but he had an evil smile on his face. The hands happily counted many notes. Johan sold things to his colleagues for $50 each. It seemed a good idea to him, and now he was sitting with a lot of money. The happy maid was trying on another dress. But Johan already refused to take the money. He decided to stop the sale, while little Philip held in his hands new clothes of expensive cloth. 
the maid was upset that she couldn't buy anything for $1.50 that cost bounce. The gardeners came into Johan's room and asked him to buy something else. They were embarrassed when Johan refused. Gilbert thought gloomily about how easily Johan gave away his presents to everyone around him. The gardener laughed at the conversation, but added that Johan wouldn't sell things anymore because he didn't know what to do with so much money. Gilbert saw that he was afraid to tell. The duke just couldn't get it into his head. He would be furious that Johan had thought of reselling the gifts for pennies. The front door of the manor house creaked open. Gilbert entered in his incredibly expensive shoes. The gentleman who entered was already greeted by Robert. He bowed respectfully to him and inquired that Gilbert seemed to have a lot of work to do while he was away. The Duke returned the greeting and suddenly noticed Robert's clothes. Robert was dressed as if for a holiday. Robert's clothes were distinctly different from his old uniform. Gilbert got a headache from what was happening. He realized that Robert had also participated in Johan's sale. The veins in his arms were veined with anger. He was very angry and felt betrayed by his own servant. Gilbert turned and went to his room, ordering him not to be disturbed until tomorrow. He was bursting with rage. Outside it was a starry night with a full moon. Gilbert went out on the terrace in his robe. He stood and breathed the evening air. He seemed to have calmed down a little and felt better. Gilbert lay down on the chaise long, he still couldn't comprehend Johan's level of poverty. Exhaling, the duke lay back on the chaise long and decided that he would no longer try to give Johan a chance to fit into the upper-class world. However, he didn't understand why he felt so restless, Gilbert wanted to regain his peace of mind. He couldn't understand why Johan appeared in his dreams and did strange things in them. It was as if someone had adjusted the duke's blanket and asked him why he had gone to bed in such a cold place. Gilbert couldn't tell if he was sleeping or not. He decided that he must have slept outside for a long time and that the servants had come to wake him. Today's business was really exhausting for him. And then it was as if he saw Johan in a maid's costume before him. Gilbert frowned and called out that he wanted to be alone tonight. Johan the maid replied that he didn't think so. Johan the maid brought a table with food and wine. He drew the table closer to the gentleman and said that he expected the gentleman to appreciate his clothes. Johan the servant opened the wine and offered the gentleman a snack. He poured some wine into the gentleman's glass and gracefully held out the beautiful glass to Gilbert. Gilbert jumped up abruptly from the chaise long and threw the glass right back in Johan's direction. The cold red wine spread over his face and hair. Drops of wine dripped from Johan's fringe. Gilbert nervously repeated that he didn't want any. Johan the maid stood in front of him, his white apron soaked with wine. Gilbert asked muffled why he had put it on himself. Johan the maid asked if the lord didn't like the look of it. He then approached the duke and offered to touch his new outfit. Johan the servant smiled in a strangely smarmy way. Gilbert growled nervously and angrily that Johan allowed himself to do that. In response, Johan picked up a bottle of wine and began to pour it over his head. Leaning very close to Gilbert, drops of wine began to drip from Johan's hair onto the duke. Gilbert clenched his teeth. He murmured that it was just another dream in which Johan had dared to disturb him again. Johan the maid ran his hand over his apron and asked Gilbert to look at him. Gilbert realized that he could not react in any way or Johan would involve him in the dream again. Interesting rumors began to spread in high society. Gilbert is said to be sponsoring a young man who looks incredibly like Maria. Most people took these rumors quite seriously and many salesmen in various brand name stores confirmed them. Many young ladies joined the conversation, eager to take a seat next to Gilbert after the Duke had parted with Maria. Meanwhile, in spite of the rumors surrounding Gilbert, preparations for the grand summer party were complete. Robert brought Gilbert to look over the papers for the summer party for the Duke's approval. However, it was the arrangement of the servants during the party that Robert wished to specify. Gilbert misunderstood why Robert was interested in this particular matter. After all, Robert always had the documents perfectly prepared and never had to correct anything. 
Gilbert held up the folder with the servant's schedule, and something interested him. His gaze became especially attentive. He read that Johan would do a cocktail bar in front of lifeguard hot hash too. He hadn't realized before that this was the official name of the dilapidated hut. Robert added aloud that the house was far from the main mansion and was not included in the servants' layout so they could shield it from public attention. Gilbert was sure that no one would try to enter such an abandoned place, for even he, as the owner, was unaware of this junk. Robert suggested that Johan should be excluded from the servants' quarters so as not to cause unnecessary excitement. Gilbert pondered and tapped his fingers on the table. The Duke realized that Daniel had brought Johan with bad intentions. And since there were usually many people at a summer party, Johan had better be hidden. The Duke agreed to Robert's proposal and signed the document. Gilbert wondered about Johan. He thought that the boy would probably even be glad to go back to the hut. Many people were eager to get an invitation to the Harry's summer party. Most of the invitees were eager to start a relationship with the unmarried Duke, and many wondered if the Duke would come to the party with someone who looked like Maria. And so the day of the feast came at last. Everything was richly decorated, and the tables were overflowing with delicious food and drink. Gilbert looked simply splendid. His appearance and the family embroidery on his suit made a lasting impression. The dressed-up girls who came to the party could not hide their admiration. They saw Gilbert alone and speculated that perhaps the rumors were a joke. The men also looked around and saw no one like Mary. Whispers came to Gilbert from all sides. Some questioned the rumors, others wondered who he was buying clothes for at the luxury boutique. Ladies in fine dresses strolled down the alley, chatting softly about something. Young men stood with spectacles in their hands, looking at each other obliquely. Gilbert exhaled a little. There was no speculation about Johan at the party, for no one had seen him. He thought that Robert, as always, had made an excellent choice. There were glasses of light evening cocktails on the tables. Gilbert took the glass and thought of Johan. He wondered what he was doing alone in the cabin. The Duke was full of curiosity. He thought of going to Johan's hut at the end of the feast. One of the servants invited everyone to gather in the garden. For very soon, in honor of the end of the feast, there would be a festive fireworks display. As the guests gathered in the garden, the countdown began. There were loud sounds of fireworks flying into the sky, and the guests were fascinated and joyfully admiring them. Only the Duke silently turned away from the spectacle. Without attracting undue attention, he walked in the opposite direction. The hut was also festively decorated. At the cocktail table stood a sad Johan, who had been preparing since the morning, but no one had come to his hut. He was sad that it was just a waste of all the drinks he had carefully prepared. In the distance there was the sound of fireworks and colored lights flew up. Johan didn't expect it at all and watched the spectacle with admiration. The fireworks were very beautiful and Johan thought he would like to see the party too. There was a rustling in the grass. Johan looked anxiously in the direction of the unexpected sound. A familiar silhouette appeared against the light of the fireworks. The lights of the fireworks sparkled in the evening sky. The young guests raved that Duke Gilbert's party was wonderful, but they lost sight of the Duke himself. It was then that Gilbert thought of Johan. Johan was in a stupor, not expecting to see the Duke near his hut. The grass under their feet continued to rustle with footsteps. Johan said he had prepared drinks, but no one came. Gilbert didn't want Johan to know that everything had been arranged on purpose to avoid gossip. For a moment Johan thought all the guests had left, but the fireworks were still going on. Gilbert's hand clenched imperceptibly into a fist. Johan looked sad and different from Gilbert's feelings in the dream. There he was much more relaxed. Johan looked at the master and did not understand why he had become so suddenly silent. But Gilbert said it was all right. He added that the party was drawing to a close and that he had come to see if any of the guests were still outside the hut, at which time air lanterns went up into the sky. Johan was impressed that they existed. He was in love with them. Gilbert and Johan stood side by side and looked up at the night sky. The Duke looked at Johan casually. 
He hadn't expected the boy to like this sight so much. But Johan beamed with happiness, for how could anyone not like such beauty, and besides, it was summer outside, a beautiful time. Gilbert turned Johan aside and agreed. The fairy lanterns continued to float in the sky. The servants began to clear the tables, clattering cutlery. Robert was satisfied that the party had gone perfectly. The guests continued to joke about where Mr. Gilbert had gone and whether anyone had seen anyone who looked like Lady Mary. Robert also wondered where the Duke had gone. He wondered if he had the right to interfere in his master's private life. He felt uneasy that Johan was in the cottage. Robert still didn't know if it was right to send him there. Robert's knee hurt, and he thought it would not be without rain in the evening. At this time Johan offered the Duke a cocktail, for he had already come to his hut. Gilbert did not expect this offer. Johan was not very good at making cocktails. Johan, hesitating, said that he had practiced very little and had not had the opportunity to prepare a single drink for the guests. Gilbert's lips trembled. The Duke said that if one did not know about the hut, it would be hard to find and wondered if Johan practiced alone. Gilbert felt that the boy was always bothering him. He agreed to try the cocktail. Johan perked up and began to check the recipes. He looked at the Duke's beauty and thought that only high-class cocktails would suit him. Johan clutched the recipe sheet nervously. In a panic, he thought he could only make gold medal and milk baileys. Gilbert noticed that Johan was very eager to take the order. However, all of Johan's offerings were too sweet, so the Duke asked for just one martini, and added that he didn't need instructions or a recipe for it. Johan froze in place, but the duke again repeated firmly the request to just pour the martini. Johan was frustrated, for he could have prepared something more complicated. Gilbert did not understand Johan's reaction and said that a martini was a classic drink and the only way Johan could demonstrate his skill. Then Johan took out a special martini glass. Suddenly there was thunder and a terrible cloudburst. Gilbert and Johan ran quickly from the street into the house. A minute ago, the weather had been perfect, and they hadn't expected rain. There was a stream of water running from Johan, but he was worried whether the master was all right. Duke Gilbert was also soaking wet. At the very beginning of the fireworks, Gilbert was determined to get away. He knew it was the perfect moment, for everyone would be absorbed in the fireworks and he could leave quietly. He saw no tracks on the way to the hut, which meant that no one had gotten there before him. He just wanted to see if Johan was slacking off, since there was no one near the cabin. As Gilbert walked towards the cottage, wondering why this guy liked working in this place so much since there was enough work to be done in the mansion, he suddenly saw Johan wiping glasses near the table outside. Gilbert noticed the boy's sharp look. Here Johan froze in admiration when he saw the fireworks. For a moment Gilbert just stood where he was and watched. He thought he wasn't paying this guy $5,000 a month to hang around here. He took another step toward the hut. Johan's whole face showed that he was excited about the fireworks, and that annoyed Gilbert. The Duke saw the silly expression on the boy's face and began to get angry. He went to the hut, which was surrounded by tall grass. Johan watched the fireworks with his mouth open. When the Duke saw the expression on Johan's face, he didn't understand how one could smile so foolishly at that moment. Johan had long since finished all the preparations and was only waiting patiently. Gilbert saw the order on the table and thought it a very stupid thing to do. After all, Johan was diligently preparing for the feast at the hut, which was very far away, in a place nobody knew about, and therefore it was unlikely that anyone would come there. Gilbert felt himself beginning to get very angry. He absolutely hated everything. He looked at the bored and very hard-working Johan and clenched his teeth in anger. At that moment, the frightened Johan realized that someone was near the hut. Gilbert came out of the tall grass and stood not far from the table. Johan was frightened, he hadn't expected to see his host here at such a time. Startled, Johan asked Gilbert what he was doing here. Then it began to rain. Soaking wet, Gilbert thought he had only wanted to catch a glimpse of Johan and go straight back, 
but now he was in an awkward situation. Johan looked through the window at the summer rain that seemed to have no end. Gilbert took off his shirt and wondered if Johan felt uncomfortable. The Duke thought about the fact that it had been a long time since he and Johan had met in person and that he looked pretty good. Gilbert admitted to himself that he was really worried about the guy during the whole party. Thunder rumbled outside the window. Gilbert noticed that the boy was making a fuss at the table. Johan was about to pour the gentleman a martini. He took out the glass again and poured olives into the bowl. But Gilbert didn't understand why there was only one glass, he didn't want to drink the martini alone. Johan was embarrassed because he was at work, but the Duke said it didn't matter. The party was drawing to a close and the Duke was with the guests all the time. Towards the end, he came here to see if Johan was working hard, but it began to rain and he had to stay here. He jabbed his finger in Johan's direction and added that if someone was drinking alone, he should keep him company out of courtesy. Johan doubted it, but they had plenty of liquor left and probably no one would say anything if he had a glass. Gilbert was annoyed at Johan's doubts, for he is his employer who offers the employee a drink and the employee thinks whether to accept. The Duke ordered Johan to quickly prepare another glass for himself. But Johan didn't know what to do, all the liquor was closed, and he simply didn't dare to use any for himself personally. Gilbert stood waiting and became even more annoyed. Johan could not decide what he wanted to drink, for the Duke had taken away all his notes, and now he didn't know the recipes. Gilbert looked at Johan in silence and lost his patience. He sucked air into his chest and exhaled slowly. Then he went over to Johan and asked if he would like something sweet to drink. Johan said that he liked sweets. Johan was confused, usually the master was so cold, but now he suddenly became strangely friendly. He looked at the duke secretly and thought that perhaps something good had happened to him today. Gilbert put his hand into his pocket. And unexpectedly for Johan, he took out a sheet of recipes. He laughed, which is not surprising in such a case, for all recipes are sweet as for a child. Johan thought that the duke looked even better when he smiled and immediately blushed at the thought. Johan added that he could even drink hard liquor. The duke was quite annoyed at this statement. The mad downpour continued outside. And inside the cabin the drink splashed in the glass. Johan muttered the names of the ingredients of the cocktail to himself. He was very pleased with himself, for his first cocktail for the master was ready. As if in a fancy bar, Johan took a glass and served it to the duke. Gilbert watched the scene in silence. He wondered why all Johan's recipes had only sweet ingredients, a kind of kindergarten. Johan was very embarrassed that Gilbert seemed to think he was a child. He came closer and held out his glass to the duke. In fact, Johan changed his mind at the last moment and only poured a martini into the glass to avoid any failed experiments. The duke took his glass and asked where Johan's glass was. Johan hastened to assure him that he would make another glass for himself at once. He went over to a table with a great variety of bottles. Gilbert was standing behind him, rushing him, so he decided to pour himself a martini as well. The duke sniffed the drink and thought it was bad form to drink without a toast. Johan secretly watched his actions and continued to admire his host's beauty. He thought that a stronger drink with a more complicated name would suit the duke much better. Johan frowned and thought it would be a good idea to learn how to make such drinks. The host looked more handsome today than ever, which made Johan nervous. He thought how it would be for everyone's happiness to spend time with the duke. But it was he who was stuck in this humble hut because of the rain. Johan got a second glass and returned to the duke, stammering to tell him that he was already here. Still plagued by doubts, he began to mutter that perhaps the duke would drink himself after all. But Gilbert calmed down, exhaled, then nudged Johan to come a little closer and told him to stop talking nonsense. They clinked two martini glasses. They should have had a drink together afterwards, but it all seemed very unusual and awkward. Johan felt himself blushing again. He looked at Gilbert, who continued to enjoy the taste of the drink. 
Finally, Johan also decided to taste the taste of what he had poured for both of them. Gilbert hummed to himself that the alcohol seemed to go down better with Johan than he had thought. However, Johan didn't like the taste of the martini at all, he immediately wanted to nibble on something sweet. Gilbert finally asked Johan how the day had gone, to which he heard the usual, all is well, in reply. Johan could not believe his ears, although he was somewhat disappointed, for he had prepared hard for the arrival of the guests, he had obviously not expected such courtesy from his host. Gilbert smiled slightly. He thought to himself that even sincerity must be in moderation. The duke continued to question Johan's hand. The boy was even more puzzled, for besides being puzzled by these strangely friendly questions, he enjoyed the timbre of his master's voice. Johan clenched his glass tighter and thought that now he knew how his host communicated in a good mood. He could not remember ever seeing his host with such a bright smile and in such a mood. Johan looked intently at the expression on Gilbert's face. He could not believe his eyes. Perhaps this mood was due to the fact that Gilbert had already had a few drinks, for he had to look after the guests all day. Johan could not understand the reasons for the Duke's good mood. Suddenly, for some reason, Gilbert froze. His glass was empty and Johan hastened to offer him a refill. The Duke agreed and asked Johan to make his best cocktail this time. Johan hurried to the table with the bottles. Music was playing on the gramophone in the cabin. Gilbert thought that this hut wasn't so bad after all. It was really quiet and comfortable. Excited by what was happening, Johan quickly prepared a cocktail and ran to offer it to Gilbert. The Duke agreed to try Johan's invention and was eager to hear his host's opinion. Johan chomped on a Bloody Mary and remarked that it was perfect for a hangover. But Gilbert didn't understand why he was suggesting a hangover cocktail and asked if there was anything else. The Duke waved his hand lightly and sent Johan back to the bar. The boy began fidgeting with the recipe sheet. He wondered if it would be a good time to make his signature cocktail. Suddenly, Duke Gilbert came too close. The Duke asked Johan if he could make an innocent kiss. Johan laughs that the name is very embarrassing, but he wants to make one of his best cocktails first. Suddenly, they heard the strongest gusts of wind outside the window. The rain was pouring down, the thunder was rolling, and now there was wind, almost a real hurricane. Johan realized that there was a lot of alcohol left outside, which could be broken by the wind and rain. Outside on the table many glasses and bottles were already broken. The Duke was about to tell Johan not to worry, but at the same moment Johan snapped and rushed outside. He decided that he had to jump out quickly and bring the bottles inside. It was scary to even go outside, let alone pick up what was left on the table. But Johan didn't think for long and was already stomping on the puddles. He covered his face with his plastered hand as if it could help him. Gilbert was again terribly angry for the evening and thought that Johan was completely crazy. The strong gusts of wind knocked him off his feet. Gilbert was furious at Johan's recklessness and ran after him. He shouted at Johan to stop immediately and go back inside. But Johan continued to rake the bottles from the table and only called back to his host to hide in the hut. Gilbert was more than angry. He shouted at Johan that it was his order as employer. But Johan did not obey and only whimpered back that he was very sorry to leave everything outside to the fury of the hurricane. 